What they're doing here is they're setting an exceptionally high, in practice probably an impossible to meet standard, for saying that evidence is even probable. Okay, by this standard, we don't have probable evidence that smoking causes lung cancer. Red meat causes heart disease. That is the scientific evidence. And this is how it's being science washed. So it was a pretty bad week for meat industry scientists, especially over on LinkedIn, where I have now been blocked by all of the people associated with this new AHDB report. Balancing health and sustainability. So we've been blocked by the lead author of this report um, and the AHDB now seem to have gone a little bit quiet about this report. They were real proud about it earlier in the week. 175 bloody pages. They didn't give any substantive response to criticisms, which exactly as I predicted, uh, it was just obfuscate, obfuscate, obfuscate. Um, we even had that fantastic exchange where I said so explicitly, I'm asking about overall meat consumption. Uh, and their marketing guy came back and said, well, amongst teenage girls, now, that said, uh, they have all now blocked me, and they are now back to obfuscating on those posts. So, you know, if anyone is motivated to join me in calling out this misleading meat industry research, please go and find the posts about this report, call them out, ask them about overall meat consumption, challenge them to a live conversation, show that they have got nothing. They're literally blocking criticism now, it's quite pathetic. Oh no, the crisis comms person is working on a Saturday to deal with me. She's looking at my LinkedIn. <laughs> so here's the situation, right? They're going to be doing this science washing strategy of presenting what look like technically accurate scientific studies to support the position that we don't need to eat less meat. Of course, that position is not true with respect to health and environmental outcomes. Um, and again, this is super predictable, right? Happened with pro-tobacco scientists and pro-fossil fuel scientists, and now we've got pro-factory farming scientists, right? Not at all a surprise that this was going to happen. So since the authors of this AHDB report don't want to talk to me and actually defend it, I'm just going to start exposing some of the ways in which this paper is junk science. I've actually discovered in the process of doing this a really good one that is going to apply to a lot of this other meat industry junk science too. So in the next 60 seconds, you are going to see how the meat industry has completely warped science in an attempt to shift reality regarding red meat and heart disease. Let's take a look at this table in the AHDB report. Now this looks pretty good for meat, right? And pretty good for red meat too. Uh, no convincing evidence for an association between red meat and heart disease. Not even probable evidence. It's actually, it's really only possible that red meat causes heart disease. Really? Well, let's look at these definitions for convincing and probable evidence here. They say that in order for evidence to be classed as convincing, actually, in fact, even for evidence to be probable, there has to be no heterogeneity meaning uh, very little difference in the results uh, in a meta-analysis. They're talking about meta-analyses here. And no potential confounding factors, meaning there are no other uh, concurrent things which might interfere with the impact of the variable on the outcome. Now, non-scientists might not really understand the implications of this. And again, that is part of the meat industry strategy here this science washing, it is going to be a bit too complex for the average person to understand. That is why it's so important that scientists and people who do understand and know what they're doing need to speak up and speak up loudly and call out this abuse of science. Okay? What they're doing here is they're setting an exceptionally high, in practice probably an impossible to meet standard, for saying that evidence is even probable. Okay, by this standard... We don't have probable evidence that smoking causes lung cancer. Okay, think about it. When has there ever been observational studies with no potential confounders? 
in this kind of study, you're always going to have potential confounders. Even in RCTs, there will be potential confounders. So this is a really weird phrasing in this table. Also, no heterogeneity. You're never going to have no heterogeneity. That's not how numbers work. If you want to have a standard for low heterogeneity in results in a meta-analysis, you could set some sort of low standard, maybe below 10% or whatever it may be, but it's almost never going to be zero. So these two standards, which the authors are setting for probable or convincing evidence, are actually impossible to meet. To make it clear, by this standard, we don't have probable evidence that smoking causes lung cancer. But here's a weird thing that a friend of mine noticed in this table. The convincing definition is almost identical to the no evidence definition. And you think, okay, well, this, there's got to be a mistake, right? There's, there's just a typo or, you know, they've copied the table over or something. Well, where is this rating scale from anyway? What is this scale of convincing to no evidence? So they cite it to this 2022 umbrella review total red and processed meat consumption in human health, an umbrella review of observational studies. And here's that same table. And the same typo is reproduced. So in the source that they cite, it also gives the same criteria for convincing and for no evidence. So what does that tell us about AHDB's interaction with their source material? They've just uncritically reproduced this very clear error. That you, you should clearly notice this error when writing this report. It kind of seems like the author of this report might have just uncritically reproduced a lot of claims that were put in front of them. Again, this is not some niche statistical point, right? This is literally just a typo, a clear error in the table that's been reproduced in HDB's table. Why would you do this? How would you not notice this? So what's the basis for this rating scale in this 2022 paper that they cite to? Because again, this is a ridiculous standard for evidence, right? A standard by which we wouldn't say that there's a probable connection between cigarette smoking and lung cancer on this standard. Well, they cite a joint WHO-FAO expert consultation, uh, but the link, unfortunately, goes to a 404 page not found on the WHO website. Fortunately, a friend of mine found the archived version of the citation and the definitions given for probable or convincing evidence in the WHO FAO expert consultation are completely different. These are the standards as they're laid out in the expert consultation. It says convincing evidence, evidence based on epidemiological studies showing consistent associations between exposure and disease, with little or no evidence to the contrary. The available evidence is based on substantial number of studies, including prospective observational studies, and where relevant, randomized control trials of sufficient size, duration, and quality, showing consistent effects. The association should be biologically plausible. So there's no mention at all here about standards for heterogeneity, in results or about the absence of confounding factors they they don't mention these things at all seems like this 2022 paper which has this lovely table showing no probable or convincing evidence that meat causes heart disease has just made these up possibly in order to create this lovely table with two rows here showing no evidence that meat, red meat or processed meat associated with heart disease in a completely misleading manner. They've inserted criteria here for evidence being convincing or probable that did not exist in the expert consultation. Now, suspiciously, the expert consultation is no longer linked 
there. It is archived and the original definitions are completely different. I put the definitions side by side with the intention of bolding the parts where they had made subtle changes, but they're not even similar. They're completely different. In the original definition for probable evidence, studies can have insufficient duration of trials, insufficient number of trials available, inadequate sample sizes, or incomplete follow-up. It also says that there could be perceived shortcomings in the available evidence and some contrary evidence. So it's certainly far short of a standard of meta-analyses with no heterogeneity, no potential confounding factors, and eventual disagreement of results over time reasonably explained. This is a completely different set of criteria. Th this has just been made up. Again, to reiterate, this paper uses an adapted definition of convincing probable and possible evidence which are completely different from those defined in the WHO FAO expert consultation in order to misleadingly present that meat is not associated with heart disease. This is misinformation demonstrably and it is going to increase the rate of deaths from heart disease in the UK. The standard that they present in their report wouldn't be met for cigarettes causing lung cancer. The original standard that they cite it from has a standard for evidence being convincing that red meat causing heart disease meets easily. Red meat causes heart disease. That is the scientific evidence, and this is how it's being science washed. So what does all of this mean? First of all, yes, there is convincing evidence that red meat causes heart disease, despite this misleading meat industry science, which completely misquotes the WHO FAO expert consultation. Second, the author of this AHD report uncritically reproduced this evidence against that claim, and that's evident by the fact that they reproduced the mistake in the table. To be frank, I think this is actually a point in the author's defence. I mean, what they've written is misinformation that will increase deaths from heart disease, but frankly, they probably don't really understand the research. No shade, okay, the author, like me, is a social scientist, not a nutritionist or a medical doctor. Okay, she's also writing for a meat industry body, so it's not that surprising if she just finds some pro-meat source that says there's no good evidence for red meat causing heart disease and she just kind of copy paste that over right boom onto the next section reproduce the mistake in the table and everything that is way better than the world where this AHDB report author actually did understand the research here she actually did know that the source she cited had miscited the original source and then she deliberately reproduced the misinformation knowing that it was going to increase the number of UK deaths from heart disease. Again, I don't think that's the case. I, I think she just uncritically reproduced the mistake and didn't understand. Nevertheless, until this gets corrected, this report is going to be out there increasing UK heart disease deaths. This report, which again has demonstrably false information regarding heart disease and red meat, will increase UK heart disease deaths. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but I actually want to reduce heart disease deaths. So I would love to see this paper retracted. And I'd actually also like to see this original umbrella review retracted as well, because this is misleading. They've miscited the original source. Now, my friends at the AHDB, of course, can't control what happens with this umbrella review, but they can retract their reprinting of the misinformation. Again, I'm assuming that the author who, like me, has a PhD in social science, has in this case made an honest mistake in uncritically reproducing the table from the Grossi review. If that's the case, you know, it sucks, but I've had to issue corrections or acknowledge problems in papers in the past. It's not the end of the world, right? Just put up your hand and say, I got it wrong. In fact, red meat is associated with a high increased rate of heart disease. Uh, you know, I've been shown why I was incorrect. I'm going to correct my mistake. Now... <laughs> You could edit the paper 
or maybe remove that section. Um, but then what if somebody found an equally glaring mistake in another part of the report? You might have to issue a, another correction. Then that does get a little bit uh, embarrassing, right? If you, if you didn't understand twice, you had to issue cor a correction twice. Honestly, if I were the report author, I would just admit I didn't really know what was going on here. Uh, let's retract the report and you know chalk this one up as a character building experience rather than leaving this inaccurate report out there, increasing the number of heart deaths in the UK. It would also be good to issue a statement acknowledging this mistake from the AHDB um, and just saying, you know, we got it wrong. We want to clarify there actually is convincing evidence that red meat causes heart disease. Um, it'd be good to correct that, right? Because otherwise you're on the record with this position, which is scientifically inaccurate and is going to be increasing the amount of heart disease deaths in the UK. So I'm sure that you wouldn't want that. Again, a little reminder of what I'm doing here overall. The meat industry is attempting to science wash itself. It's using these silly little tricks in what looks like scientific evidence to mislead policymakers and the public about the need to reduce our meat consumption. We do need to reduce our meat consumption. The meat industry is science washing and I'm calling it out. We're never going to be able to uncover all of these, but the more of them we expose, the more we can demonstrate that this pattern and this phenomenon is real and the more we can erode trust in this kind of science coming out of the meat industry and its associates. For example, I would never trust anything published by Frederick Leroy again after I've seen how duplicitous he's been in the Dublin Declaration. The more we do this and the more we call it out and the louder we are in calling it out, the more we empower other scientists to also speak up against this coming wave of meat industry junk science. If you want to be part of the fight back, subscribe here, join the Discord server over at dsc.gg slash chrisbryantphd. See you next time.